Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, so in our next topic, we're going to discuss about the dividend structure power method, which is TFP method. All right. So this TFP method comes from a quasi Newton type. Okay. We have we have discussed this. We have a gradient type, gradient and conjugate gradient type. Okay. Can gradient and conjugate gradient type. We have Newton type and also we have quasi-Newton type. So in gradient and conjugate, we have discussed about the uh, steepest distance. Later, we're going to discuss about the conjugate and also Fletcher B. And in Newton type, okay, we have done with solving the quadratic and non-quadratic and the difference between gradient and Newton type. Gradient use derivative as the direction okay the search direction that we are going to move to the solution point use the first derivative for steepest descent and we have done with quadratic and non-quadratic by using newton's method where the direction comes from the second derivative uh, of function which here is the Hessian matrix, but we have invoice uh, inverse step. Sorry, we use Hessian inverse as our direction in Newton's method. Okay, for quadratic, there is no usage of lambda. For non quadratic, you have to find the value of lambda first. That one is for Newton. Okay, now for quasi Newton, where this DFP and FGS consists of. So the direction use the approximating matrix. Okay, we approximate a matrix H to the Hessian inverse to generate such direction. Okay, so this H, how can we find this H rise to this method, the FP and the FGS? So basically, these two methods are quite similar, but with a different choice of H K. Okay, so now let's proceed with um, dividend Fletcher Powell method. Okay, so for the FP, this the FP where it stands dividend Fletcher Powell method here. Okay, we also call it as updated matrix method. Why? Because we need to always update the matrix value here. Okay, this one. H here is an approximate matrix, so we have to update the matrix. So that's why it is also called as updated matrix method. So it com it is a combination of the advantages of Newton. Okay, we combine the advantages of Newton and steepest, but avoiding calculating the inverse Hessian. So we want to avoid the calculation of inverse Hessian in Newton method. In Newton method, for each iteration, we always need to find our Hessian by using the current uh, current iterative point. Okay, we need to find our Hessian and we need to find the uh, Hessian inverse. So it is about time constraint. So we want to avoid the calculation of the inverse Hessian in Newton method. So we combine the advantages of Newton and steepest descent. Okay, so dividend suggested a method. So this DFP method is a method that change from the steepest descent to Newton method when the number of iterations become larger. Okay, so we have done with our previous method in Fibonacci, in Golden Search, in Cubic, in Quadratic, and of course in Hook and G. The iteration number is quite long. There are such a long uh, calculation of evaluation, right? We want to avoid that. So we are still improving. All of the mathematicians right now still are improving the methods years by year. So what are the purpose? Because we want to improve the method in terms of flexibility, in terms of number of iteration, in terms of CPU time. Okay, because in in a real practical, this kind of number of iteration is quite uh, uh, 
is quite price consuming of course okay in industry we do, we want to avoid such a uh, long process because you know time is money all right okay so now let's proceed this dfp method okay use the following generated formula okay remember in our newton we have uh, the update formula okay where it involved the Hessian inverse so in this in this dfp it is quite same actually but now we have h where h is an approximate matrix and we start with h naught which is an identity matrix okay and gi is a gradient okay where xi is the current iterative point so this dfp method is based on conjugate gradient search also the direction of search is generated as follows. So this is the direction of search. Okay, we have the iterative formula. We also have the conjugate direction search. Okay, of course, GI is the gradient comes from the, the uh, derivative of F and HI is an iterated form of this formula so we obtain h by using this so we use this to approximate the matrix h where the h naught is always start by using identity All right okay this is the definition we have gamma i equals to h is um, I, G, I plus 1 minus C, I, delta I here equals to X, I plus 1 minus X, I, which equals to lambda I, P, I, okay, where lambda is a scalar, that minimizes the function, and H, I plus 1 is obtained from update formula repeatedly, which has the following properties, okay? So, this is how we update the value of H, where this is delta, this is gamma. How can you find delta and gamma? This is how we find delta, uh, sorry, the gamma, how we find delta, okay? And this H is obtained from here where you know that H naught is, uh, is an identity, okay? So the properties used here, H, if H naught is a positive definite, then H i plus one is also positive definite, okay? Because identity is a positive definite. And when we continue the iteration, H i plus 1 will approach the inverse patient. So actually, okay, through iteration, one, uh, when we update the iteration, this H actually is approaching the inverse patient matrix. Okay, so the general form of the FP is given like this. Where what is PI? I is this one comes from here. Okay. I'm sorry, this one minus HI GI PI is obtained from the matrix multiplied with the gradient. Okay, let's take a look. Now we repeat the process until the convergence is satisfied so what are the properties okay so this method is stable right a method is stable for minimizing fx if the value of the function decrease for every iteration due to the positive definite hi for every i right remember because we use identity okay and then the another property is a quadratic convergence and an iterated method for minimizing function has quadratic convergence if it attains to optimum point of quadratic function in finite. So it attains to optimum point of a quadratic function in finite iteration. So by using the FP, the optimum point is attained at most n iteration for n variables of function. Okay, so this is how can we describe about the quadratic convergence and iteration for n variables of function? Okay, then it is mutually conjugate 
direction. So the DFP method generates the mutually conjugate direction and this direction are used as a search. Okay, let's take a look at the algorithm together with the example. Okay. Right. So here we have uh, the algorithm of the FP. Okay, so this is the algorithm. And then we want to minimize a function of 1 minus 2x minus 2y minus 4xy plus 10x squared plus 2y squared. Okay, as it is mentioned in the notes, this method uh, has an, uh, an iteration of number according to n number of variable so let's take a look we have two variables so we should stop until two iteration okay so now how can we start so first of course you have your you have your x naught x naught is given there so when you have your x naught you can find your f x naught okay where your f x naught here equals to 1. And from here, you can find your g x, where g x is the derivative of f x. So you just differentiate this f with respect to x and with respect to y. So first you have minus 2 minus 4y plus 20 x. All right, and then for uh, differentiate with respect to y, you have minus 2 minus 4x plus 4y. So this is um, gx. Okay, now let's start the iteration. In iteration number 1, okay, you have to find what is your p naught. Okay, pi. So start i equals to 0. So your P naught equals to negative H naught times with G naught. So what is H naught? Remember, H naught always start with identity. So here we have two variables. So we should have two by two matrix identity here. And your G naught equals to what? So just substitute this one. This one is your GX. Then GX naught. Just substitute X with 0, Y with 0. And then you can have minus 2 and minus 2. Okay. So now we have here H naught, okay, negative H naught, G naught is minus 2, minus 2, right? Then solve this, we can have E naught equals to 2, 2, okay? We have here H naught equals to I, P naught here is a direct search from the initial point. So now carry out a linear search to find the value of lambda, where lambda i is chosen to minimize. Okay, so you know that previously we have done this in the iterative formula. We have x i equals to sorry x i plus one equals to x i plus lambda i p i. Okay. Now we have x naught equals to 0, 0, lambda naught, p naught is 2, 2 will give you 2 lambda naught, 2 lambda naught. Okay, and f x1 is given by substitute this point of x1 to your function f x. Okay. Now we will have 1 minus 2, 2 lambda naught, minus 2, 2 lambda naught, minus 4, 2 lambda naught, 2 lambda naught, 
plus 10 2 lambda naught squared plus 2 2 lambda naught squared. Okay? So simplifying this will give you 1 minus 24 lambda naught plus 48 lambda naught squared. So this is your f x1. Okay? Sorry, there's a mistake here. This one is 1 minus 8 lambda naught plus 32 lambda naught squared. Okay, now we want to find lambda, so we should carry out the linear search to find lambda here. Okay. So from here, you have your F. Then same process with the previous uh, procedures that we have done. So we now differentiate the F here with respect to lambda naught. So this one equals to zero, okay? So we'll give you here minus eight plus 64 lambda naught. So solving this will give you lambda naught equals to one over eight, okay? So previously, um, in our previous example, we have obtained sometimes two values of lambda. And that value of lambda need to be chosen in order to minimize the function. But now we have only one. So that, that, then this is the only value of lambda, okay, which we believe can minimize the function because we have done, we have used this uh, sufficient coalition to find the extrema point. Okay. So now your lambda naught is equals to 1 over 8. Then what? Then you can have your what? You can have your delta naught. Okay, you once you obtain your lambda, you can have your delta naught there. Okay. So your delta naught. Okay. Your delta naught here is equals to lambda naught times p naught. Right. So your delta naught here, here is your delta naught. Is equals to lambda naught times p naught, which comes from here. So that's why your xi plus 1 here is equals to xi plus delta i. So now from here you can find your delta naught equals to lambda naught times with p naught. So your lambda naught is 1 over 8 and your p naught is 2 to will give you 1 over 4, 1 over 4. So, you have your delta naught, then you can have your x1. x1 equals to x naught plus, so initially, I write down here lambda naught, p naught. So, each equate, this one is equivalent to x1 x naught plus delta naught, okay? Okay, so just substitute the value. You have your x naught. Zero, zero. Okay, plus this. Delta naught, 1 over 4, 1 over 4, will give you 1 over 4, 1 over 4. So this is your x1. Okay, now you have your x1. 
you can have your G1. How can you find G1? By substituting X1 to your Gx here. Okay, so your G1 should be 2 minus 2, right? And you can have your what? The next step is find your G1 already done, then find your gamma. Okay, the next step is to find gamma naught, which equals to what? GI plus 1 minus GI. So, G1 minus G naught. Then you will have 2 minus 2 minus minus 2 minus 2, which equals to 4, 0. Now, you have your gamma, G, delta, and so on. Then you can find your update metric by using H, I plus 1 there. So, you have your H0. H0 is the identity now. H1, okay, by using the HI plus 1 here, H1 is equals to H0 plus delta naught, delta naught transpose, divide by delta naught transpose delta naught, minus with H naught, Gamma naught, gamma naught transpose, H naught, divide by, gamma naught transpose, H naught, gamma naught. So just substitute all values that you have obtained earlier. Okay, so let's do this. Have, we have the identity matrix. Just substitute every value here. So this gamma not this one is gamma not right here, it's not delta not. Okay, this is gamma. So you need to calculate one by one here. Be careful with your calculation. Is solving this will give you 16. 16. Right, so this is your fish one. Okay, so now we have our H1, we have our X1, then we can proceed with the next iteration. So in, in iteration number two, okay, you have your X1, you have your H1, you can update by finding what? Again, repeat from step one, finding P1. Okay, and then find again delta 1, lambda 1, all right? And then gamma 1, and so on, until we reach the stopping criteria. So your P1 is given by negative H1, G1. So you have your H1 earlier, okay? So we'll give you here 0, 2. And then you can update your x2 equals to x1 plus lambda 1 
P1. Then from here, you can find again your lambda. So here, uh, we'll give you, okay, hope you can try this. One number four plus two lambda one. So just substitute this x2 to function. And then this will give you one minus two. Four plus two lambda one. Okay, and then again, differentiate f with respect to lambda one equals to zero, solving for lambda will give you lambda equals to one over four, and then you can find your delta. So delta one is given by lambda one times P one, which give you zero and one over two. Okay, now you have your uh, delta one, we can find your updating Point x2 here, lambda x1, which one x1 plus lambda 1 p1, and lambda 1 p1 is equals to delta 1, so x1 plus delta 1, which equals to 1 over 4, 3 over 4. So now you can have your g2. Okay, for this case, you are going to have 0, 0 where the magnitude of gx now is less than is equals to zero which is less than the epsilon okay but you have to find your h2 lambda and gamma one gamma one okay gamma one and h2 so from here you can find your Gamma 1 equals to G2 minus G1. Then you can have minus 2, 2 here as your gamma 1. Okay. And you can update your matrix by finding H2. Which equals to H1 plus 1 plus delta 1 transpose. Delta 1 transpose gamma 1 minus H1, gamma 1, gamma 1 transpose H1, gamma 1 transpose H1, gamma 1. Okay, we'll give you a updated matrix of 1 over 16, 1 over 16, 1 over 16, and 5 over 16. So now we have done with uh, finding H, okay, Ian, you need to check. Is that the magnitude of G less than epsilon? All right. If not, then proceed again from, uh, repeat again from step one. So now you check uh, the magnitude of G and also delta. What is your delta? And what is your G here? So magnitude of G, X, equals to zero and you have to check also magnitude of del 2 equals to what so del 2 here sorry del 1 del 1 here equals to 0 1 over 2 so you can find the magnitude of this 1 zero okay this is how you find magnitude which equals to what zero point five so we can conclude that this is less than epsilon and you know that for this dfp we are going to have an iteration for about 
n number of variables. So that's why we stop now. Okay. So this is how we minimize the function by using DFP. So the crucial part is to H. Okay. So why we need to update the matrix H? Because that matrix will determine the search E here. All right. This one. Okay. So now you just can conclude your process by uh, updating your minimum point. Which is X2, okay? X2 is 1 over 4, 3 over 4. And minimum value of Fx2. Okay, you can calculate here. Okay, so this is how we find the solution point by using the FP method. All right, thank you guys.